Welcome to the second video on creating music inside of Cubase Elements. In the first video, we looked at building a foundation by finding some groove blocks that we could use. Now we've got those ready, it's time to start building a structure over the top. I'm writing this track as we go along in the video series from a cottage on the east coast of New Zealand. We're doing some renovation work on the cottage at the moment and it's hard work because I'm a musician and I've got poor delicate little musical hands with blisters all over them. Unlike this cottage, building a musical structure inside of Cubase Elements is super easy because we've got the chord track to do all the hammering and the sawing for us. The chord track is the go-to function for that day when you think, today's my writing day, and you sit down in front of your computer and there's absolutely no ideas coming out. Well, don't stress, put the guitar away, put the keyboard away, pour yourself a glass of wine, and let's go and write some music. We've got our original production groove idea here, so it's time to add some harmonic content. So I'm going to go and add Hellion Sonic SE2, and I can once again browse the presets, or I can just access it through the drop-down menu here. It's under the synth folder. I'm just adding the instrument because I want to show you how to load presets inside of Hellion Sonic SE. You can see on the left hand side the 16 instrument slots. We can click on the triangle to the right of that to once again bring up the media bay to show us all of our filters and attributes for different types of sounds. Now the one thing I'm really impressed about is that trip comes included in Hellion Sonic SE2 and that is wicked because it's got some of the best arpeggiators around. I'm just going to select a sound and now start playing around with the parameters of the sound using the eight encoders down the bottom of the instrument. Each preset or patch inside of Hellion Sonic SE comes with different functions or parameters down on those eight encoders, so you can really get some varied sounds. Next up, if we go over to the left hand side, you'll notice that there's eight pads there. Now the top four pads contain different arpeggiators, which we can trigger using an external MIDI controller. Down the bottom, we've got these chords, which we can change. So we can actually trigger these chords by right mouse clicking on a pad and saying learn trigger note and then just playing a note on the external MIDI keyboard. Now whenever we play that note, we're playing a chord. If you're not that confident in playing chords, this is a great idea for you because all you need to do is right mouse click, assign all of those chords to a note on the keyboard, and once you're done, you just hit one note to trigger one chord and you're in control of when the chords are actually played. You can preview it over the top of your project very easily. So that's the first way you can record music without really needing to know anything about the chords. The next way is to use the chord track itself. So I've added an instance of the chord track, I've got my pencil tool, and I'm just adding chords anywhere. There's no rhyme or reason to it, I'm not thinking it through. It's a matter of just trying different ideas. If it doesn't work, delete it, start again, or change it. These chord track chords are going to control a number of different instruments that I add into this production. You can set it up to monitor on a track by clicking on the box in the middle and selecting the track that you want the chords to be played through. So now it's playing through the Hellion Sonic SE track. And in the editor window, which you get by double clicking, I can select any type of chord. I can also have a MIDI keyboard connected and just play a chord in and Cubase instantly tells me what that chord is, which is pretty cool if you don't know anything about chords. Next up, if we move over to the circle of fifths, we can select a main root chord for the composition. So we can use the arrows to go backwards and forwards. I'm gonna say F, and this is the beautiful thing about the circle of fifths concept. Every chord in close proximity is going to sound great next to each other. They're all strong chord changes. I don't want to burst anyone's bubble, but people have been writing using the Circle of Fifths concept for centuries and centuries, and they've written some pretty damn good music using this theory alone. The amazing thing about having it in Cubase Elements is you don't need to learn about it. You just use your cursor keys to move from chord to chord, click on a chord, and find something that's going to work for you. It really is a groundbreaking function to have inside of a door. I like the chords, but the sound's just a bit too dark and deep for me. So I'm going back into Hellion Sonic SE to try some different sounds. That one's definitely not working. Ah yeah, that hits me straight away. It feels good, it's got an attack, it's got space in between the arpeggiated notes.
Now it's a matter of adding more instances of Heli and Sonic SE to be controlled by the chord pad. And I'm looking for a bassier sound now. Something that'll fill out the groove. At the start of the video, we specified chord track to monitor on that first Hellion Sonic track. Now I'm adding more tracks. I need to have another way of chord track controlling the instruments. So I'm highlighting the chords and just dragging them up and straight away, I've got the MIDI notes for those chords. With this bass line, I want to show you another amazing way of working with the chord track. I'm going over to the chord tab and in the live transform, I'm selecting chords. Now I can play any note on the MIDI keyboard and it's going to be right because the chord track has locked those chords into what's been played on the Hellion Sonic SE track, and I can't play a wrong note. All I'm doing is recording, and I'm in control of the timing of what's been played. Chord track, once again, is doing the hard work for us. Music production is really about two steps forward, one step back. And at the moment, I'm happy with the notes, but the sound's quite fat and stodgy to me, so I want to control it a little bit more. I could just go and turn it down, but instead of doing that, I'm going back into the instrument. I'm just going to shake the sound a little bit. We're going to do more of this in the mix video later on in the series. When I added that dub kick drum in the first video, I was kind of thinking it'd make a good bass line with that rhythm. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for a bass sound. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but it's worth a try. A really easy way to create a bass line that's got some element of groove is to copy a kick drum part. So I've just dragged it down to the new track that I've tried to see if it works. And of course I've got no idea about the sound that's going to come out and that's pretty weird. But this is all about shaping and being creative. So I'm not giving up, I'm going back into my presets and I'm just going to try a few different bass sounds. Once I find something that I think will work for now, it's a matter of going over and taking care of the notes, because at the moment, it's just playing the one note over and over again. So I'm going to select chords, and it's going to analyze the note data that's already in there, and then change it so that it fits in with the chord track. For it to work, we need to make sure we've actually got chords in the area we're working on. So I'm holding down Alt, and I'm just copying those chords straight over into the area. Now I'm going back to the drawing board and I'm going to continue to look for patches that I think is going to work for this part. Maybe this is the most time consuming part of the creative process is making sure you've got the right colors for your production. Some people might think it's tedious, but I kind of really enjoy the challenge. I've got this sound, I think I can work on it further, so I'm just going to drop the level and we can further manipulate the sound by adding audio inserts over the top of the VST instruments. So I'll go to the audio inserts tab and I'm thinking maybe I'll just see how a distortion unit works. So in the distortion tab we've got the VST amp rack. If you play the electric guitar, you can plug it into an audio interface and use this over the top of your guitar as a high quality amp simulator. It's pretty cool that that's included inside of Elements. You can copy a track just by dragging the event data down into a blank area. So now I've copied that track, I need to find another sound so I'm not just doubling up on the same sound. Once again, the chord track's playing all the notes and we're defining and shaping the color of the track itself. I'm gonna keep going and producing these musical building blocks for this track. In the next video, we're going to look at building the melody. And we're going to use the chord track to find some ideas for the melody. And we're also going to look at some crazy pitch correction that's included inside of Cubase Elements. I'll catch you there.